Welcome, friends, to our second uh, edition of Virtual Vespers. I hope you've all had a good day. It's a, been a lovely day outside. I hope you've had a chance to get out and uh, experience some of that, of course, practicing good social distancing in this weird and, and odd time in which we live. Uh, before we get started this evening on uh, our prayers and uh, a little bit of scripture and devotion, I want to share just a few words of announcement uh, with you. Uh, first of all, uh, this coming Sunday is Palm Sunday, which is the beginning of Holy Week. And in years past, uh, Holy Week's been a very full time for us here at the church. We've done, um, we've had our Monday, Thursday services, our Easter egg hunt on Wednesday evenings, and of course, our Tenebrae service on Good Friday. Uh, it, it goes without saying that most of those services are canceled. And uh, we may be rescheduling something like our Easter egg hunt in the coming weeks. But one of the things we always do for Holy Week is our Holy Week devotional, our Holy Week book. And I'm working on reformatting that now so that I can get it out to you in a digital way. Uh, I'm hoping that you'll receive that maybe in your inbox or post it here on Facebook for you to find uh, by Saturday morning. So that you'll have that and be able to, to read these devotions that our members have worked hard on to share with you during this most uh, uh, holy time of the year. Uh, also, uh, one of the things I wanted to just put out there to you, if you're seeing this live or recorded later, if you're interested at all in, um, so if, if you'd like to read scripture or maybe pray during our uh, Williams Worship on the Web, the interactive worship guide that I send out uh, each uh, weekend, if you'd like to be a part of that, get, a, get in touch with me. Send me a message here on Facebook. Uh, shoot me a, an email or a text. Let me know. I'd love to um, set that up if you can record it either at home. We'll be recording some things uh, for worship actually after this broadcast tonight to make sure that we are, are prepared for the weeks ahead uh, to offer uh, continue, a continuous uh, option for worship. Uh, also, uh, I want to say a word or two about Easter. With Easter coming up now, just a week and a half away, uh, it's going to be odd. It's a, in some way a historic Easter in that we're going to have to worship and celebrate it together individually at home. And while I hope that we'll find ways to mark that as families, as we're gathered together in our homes uh, apart from one another for a brief period, uh, I'll mark that time some way. Uh, through the uh, Williams Worship on the web that you'll receive through some other um, resources that we'll send out. But I also want to say to you that what my plans are as of right now, and as we all know, plans seem to be changing regularly now. But as of right now, my plan is for us to celebrate Easter on our first or second Sunday we're back together. I say first or second because that first one may be a time when we're all sort of uh, just testing the limb a little bit and make sure it'll hold us up. So on that first or second Sunday we come back, whenever that is, hopefully sooner rather than later, we will celebrate Easter together. Uh, you'll find out more about that in these broadcasts and through the uh, email and, and those sorts of things, uh, announcements here on Facebook and the like. I also want to say another word to you about our online giving options, the mail-in drop-off uh, of your giving, your tithes, your offerings. So far, you've all done an excellent job in that. And I, I can't, as a member of the staff and as a uh, just a member of this church, I'm extremely grateful to you for doing that. But just to remind you that that's still what we're doing, still an option. Uh, and we're also looking into some of the other things you've probably seen on the news for small businesses and nonprofits, should we need those uh, going forward. Uh, in the coming weeks. I uh, want to also just remind you that if there's something you need throughout the week, some uh, errand you need running that maybe you're a little unsure about getting out or anything like that, be sure to contact me, contact church office. We're checking messages regularly or contact your family's deacon. Uh, if there's anything we can do to help in any sort of way, um, as long as we can keep our own sort of social distancing, we will do that. Um, those are all the sort of things that I want to, to say to you uh, this evening as far as announcements and those sorts of things go. Uh, but as we come together now for a time of a uh, brief moment of prayer and reflection, I'd like for us to just begin our time together uh, with a prayer of invocation. So would you pray with me? Our 
Holy God, we are grateful once again for a chance to be together in this way that technology allows us to be. And God, we're grateful for that. I'm thankful for those who are gathered, whether we're gathered live or maybe viewing this later. Lord, I pray that as we are in the midst of this strange and odd time, Lord, that you are with us, that you make us mindful of your presence, make us mindful of one another. And as we come together now to share in a brief time of devotion and prayer, God, we ask for your spirit to unite us across the web, across distance, as we come together now. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. I want to share with you a word of scripture from the Psalms. I, that's sort of what I'm thinking about doing in these times together of these virtual Vespers, just sharing with you a reading from the Psalm for the coming Sunday. So this is the lectionary selection of the Psalm uh, for this coming Sunday, Palm or Passion Sunday. And it's from Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2, and then verses 19 through 29. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gate of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. I'll give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now, I want us to take just a few moments together intentionally praying, as we did last time, if you were here with us in this moment. To, to pray in a sort of ordered fashion, at least uh, to be mindful of our prayers in an ordered fashion. And that is, I want us to first pray for the church, for our church, for the First Baptist Church of Williams, for the Church Universal, Versal, the capital C church around the world, to pray and, and be mindful of all the things that are happening. I mean, for a couple of weeks when this first happened, we were sort of all feeling this out together. But now here we are in our second, third, some people fourth, maybe fifth week without our regular time together, without the regular religious rhythm of church, of the discipline of gathering together for study, for prayer, for, for singing. How many of you miss singing right now? Be mindful that this is a weird and unprecedented time in the history of the church. And, and when this is happening, all manner of things come to the surface. We start really wondering what's not just essential in our society, but what's essential for our church? What's essential for the church universal? What does it mean now to be church as we're gathering separately? What does it mean to, to do some of the things we've always done as church without being able to be together to do them? I, I want us to spend some time as we pray to pray for the church, pray for those who lead in the church, pray for the church as it sustains this time and what it may look like on the other side. I also want us to take some time to pray for others. As this whole pandemic has been wearing on, more and more of us will start to know people, friends maybe, who've been diagnosed with COVID-19 with this virus that's causing so much, uh, so much trouble, so much heartache for so many people. So to be mindful of those who are experiencing directly or maybe secondhand the effects of this virus, but also want us to be mindful of, of those who are serving us, all of us, in the middle of this. 
think about those who are our healthcare workers, heroes, we're calling them now, right? Because they are. They're there on the front line serving not only those who are affected with the coronavirus, but those who who need their regular medical assistance, those who who need chemotherapy, those who need dialysis, those who need some treatment somewhere. They're still out there, home health care workers out there every day. Be mindful of them, praying for them. But also, a thought crossed my mind this week of being mindful of those who are well, working at our fast food restaurants or restaurants in general. As we are seeking, and I hope you are if you're able, to support our local businesses, it occurred to me these people are coming into work every day, hoping that people are coming to, to you know, ask for their services. And they're not getting paid a whole lot of money. So to be mindful of them, be praying for them, that they'll be safe, that they'll be productive, and that those who maybe in such times as these get a little ill will sort of be a little more mindful of the people who are seeking to serve them. So I want you to be mindful of the church, mindful of others, and of course, finally, mindful of yourself as you pray. This is a tough time, and, and there are great, great moments and that can be involved in this, especially if you're in a family with young children, you're staying at home, you might have some great times with your kids, but we also know you might have some times where you're really ready for this all to be over. So just pray for one another and pray a small prayer for yourself. God will give you some patience and time and all of this that we can get through this together and be back with one another. So as we spend a, a few moments in silent prayer, as you pray at home, uh, as we pray together, be mindful of those things. Pray for the church, for others, and for yourself. So let's take some time now to pray together. Holy God, we are mindful this week as time continues to carry on or that there is a lot going on in, in us and around us. Lord, we ask that as we stop to pray, not only now, but each and every day, Lord, we pray for your church, for not just the institution, not just the buildings and the small locations, but the gathered body of believers around the world. That you strengthen us in this time, show us what's essential, show us what it is we all have in common. Show us, Lord, what it is that we have in you and you alone. And make us mindful and grateful each day. And Lord, we pray this evening for others. God, for those who are sick, those who are affected by this virus, those who seek to serve, God, not only our medical professionals who we pray we never take for granted, but God, those too who serve us in smaller ways, in ways that are as equally important now as those who help us to get our food, who stock our shelves at the grocery stores, those, God, who drive our trucks, those who make deliveries, those who are sure to make sure, God, that we have what we need. And Lord, we pray for, for peace and for grace and patience for ourselves. But Lord, we know it's a beautiful time of year. It's a great time to be outside, but we're missing our friends. We're missing our family. And Lord, even in the midst of all this, other things of life still go on as we, Lord, as we say goodbye to friends and family, as we wonder how do we, how do we mourn loss in the middle of this? How do we celebrate new life as children are born and we can't hold them, we can't visit them, we can't touch them? God, help us to just see the way through this. Like the children of Israel wandering, Lord, help us to follow you as a pillar of fire in the evening and that cloud in the day. Unsure of where we may be going, but trusting, Lord, that you're leading us to where we need to be. 
So Lord, help us not only in these times of prayer, but each day to be be mindful of one another, grateful for you, and always, always, Lord, trusting that you're taking us where we need to go. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, just as a thought of devotion tonight, I I wanted to think about those words from the psalmist and words that that really, I don't know, almost sort of stick to you a little bit, I suppose. The psalmist says, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You, you know, when I say that, if I'm honest with you, I, I, I rarely ever quote that line from the Psalms when I've had a good day. I rarely ever wake up in the morning when my coffee tastes right, when everything goes well, when I've had a really great lunch, when I've had good company, when everything has been good. I rarely ever say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Most often those words come to my mind when I've had a bad day. When I need to be reminded that even today is a day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. But I can absolutely promise you I've never said it in days like we're having now because I've never had days like we're having now. What do you do? Now, how, you know, if, what kinds of days are these? They're strange ones for sure. But these are still days that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. That's still kind of a hard word to hear, a hard thing to sort of process. How do you be glad when, well, you can't get out of the house? How do you be glad when you can't see your friends and your family? How do you be glad when you're not sure if you're going to have a job tomorrow, next week, next month? I thought about that, and then I thought about the refrain that goes through this psalm. It's a refrain that's in a lot of psalms. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. I like that phrase, the steadfast love of God. You've, some of you have heard me talk about it. It's my favorite Hebrew word, hesed. This steadfast love, it's undefinable. It's this sort of depth of love that our English language sort of misses. And so as I think about this, as I think about this refrain from Psalm 118 that runs throughout a lot of the Psalms, give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his undefinable, unfathomable love endures forever. How many days are included in forever? Well, all of them. All the days are included in forever. Great days when everything goes well, when I forget to say to myself, and you may forget to say to yourself, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And those bad days when everything goes wrong and the wheels come off and those days, that's when his steadfast love endures. And yeah, even in days when there's a pandemic that's so strange and unusual that we're not quite sure what to make of it. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his steadfast love endures forever. My prayer for you the rest of this week is that you'll remember that refrain. Maybe you'll remember the other verse. Yeah, uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I hope you find reasons to rejoice and be glad in that day. But I pray more that you'll remember that God's steadfast love endures forever. Even in days like this, when we can't count on much certainty at all anymore, it seems, we can always count on the fact, the reality, the truth, that God is good and his steadfast love endures forever. So as we end our time together tonight, uh, I want us to end as we typically do on our Wednesday evening services, together saying the Lord's Prayer. So you don't have to say it out loud at home. No one's going to know if you did, but I encourage you to say it together with me now as we pray in the way that Jesus taught us to pray, Say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Blessings on you, my friends, until we see each other again, either live or in person.